Hello bourbon fans, I'm Tim the Suburban Dad and today I want to talk a little bit more about Maker's Mark especially with the exciting news that their wood finishing series is finally coming out for 2022 BRT 1 and 2 it appears that they're both being released at the same time this month in September and I want to talk a little bit more about their private selection barrels if you've ever looked at one you've noticed that they've got all these numbers on the label and different um, descriptions of the the five different staves that they include well, what does that really mean and how can you pinpoint a barrel a bottle that you'd probably like without even having to really taste it first let's get to it If you want to stay up to date with the latest bourbon releases, bourbon news, tips and tricks for finding good bottles, you're going to want to subscribe to this channel. I will keep you up to date with everything going on and help dads find great bourbon. Today we're talking about Maker's Mark. So I am a big Maker's Mark fan, especially of their wood finishing series, which has been going on for a few years now. And unfortunately, this seems to be the last year that they're doing it. The good news is they have private selection barrels, in other words, store picks that are done that yield some amazing flavors. I've got this one with me today. This is titled Fruit Cobbler. It's picked by Lebanon Wine and Spirits in Illinois. Okay, so it's got a cool title, catchy Fruit Cobbler, sounds tasty. A lot of times these private selections do have something tasty like that. Sometimes they're just the store name or whatever kind of title the, the people choosing the barrel decide to give it. it really doesn't matter. I kind of like when they do a title like Fruit Cobbler. It gives you a sense of what to expect with the bottle. But let's say you've got just liquor store pick number two. And you have no idea that doesn't tell you anything about possible flavors well this little guide down here absolutely will key you in more rather than me just talk about it let's go ahead and dive in and I'll actually do a little taste here to be able to real-time let you know what I'm getting with this pour so the name fruit cobbler implies fruit notes uh, with cobbler, usually you're expecting some sort of berry, typically. Um, there's also going to be maybe some spice in there and uh, the pastry part. So let's see what actually shows up here in this one. So right on the nose, absolutely fruity. Um, actually some apple on the nose. Very, it's a hundred and... 10.8 proof typical range for maker's mark you don't really get an ethanol punch in the nose which is nice very gentle you get more of the actual nose to it a little bit of baking spice so apple cinnamon but some caramelish tones in there as well so pretty decent very inviting nose i'm really i'm a fan already okay first sip Gets my palate acquainted. Let's go again. Pretty much the nose carries over into the palate. Very fruity, tasty. Some apple, but oh man, I'm trying to pinpoint what kind of fruits. A little bit of maybe ripe cherry, um, maybe just a hint of raspberry in there. Still apple, I kind of get that. Caramel, just a little bit of oak to provide that more pastry type note and definitely some spice not a super punchy in the tongue type of spice but just like a light baking spice like you'd expect in a pastry like that this is very tasty all right so let's say the label just said Lebanon wine and spirits pick number one and you saw these numbers so on the different staves we've got baked American pure seared seared French cuvee we've got makers mark 46 Roasted French Mendiant, Toasted French Spice. 
what do these mean? And what the heck are these numbers? Well, there's 10 different staves that go into these. And depending on how many of each stave is gonna add different flavors and notes to it. So the first one, Baked American Pure, that's gonna provide more light, sweet notes to it, a little bit of vanilla, and a light spice, or light oaky finish rather. Not so much spice, but light, light oak. Um, number two, seared French cuvee, that's gonna add more of a rich mouthfeel, so more rich caramel notes and molasses and a longer finish on that. And then the third one, Maker's Mark 46, that's gonna provide more rich fruit flavors and it's gonna provide a long spicy finish. And then the uh, French, roasted French minion, that's gonna be more um, like milk chocolate, real rich dried fruit, nuts, coffee, long rich finish there. Makes me think of a nice hearty rich cold weather dessert or decadent drink, that kind of thing. And then the last one, ten, toasted French spice, that's gonna add more of the bright fresh fruit notes and some zesty spice. Okay, so we got one, three, one, four, one. So not a whole lot on the light, sweet oak notes. A little bit heavier on the rich fruit caramel mouthfeel, which that makes perfect sense because this is a very pleasant, oily type pour. So it makes sense that there's more of those kind of staves in there. The Maker's Mark 46, uh, it's kind of surprising that there's only one because that is more of the dark, rich fruits with a little bit of spice in there. I, I'm aware of what these staves add, but how many to get how much of each flavor, I mean, that's totally gonna depend on the combination you got going here, so it's really hard to say. Now on this one, you got four the roasted mendiant. Um, so definitely going for more of that rich, rich fruit, some chocolatey notes, uh, which doesn't, not much chocolate here, but more of the caramel, um, and the last one, only one of the French spice. So again, some light fruit notes and a little bit of spice there. So very tasty. I've had one called um, chocolate caramel strudel, and it had six of the French mendiant ones in there. And holy cow, when you took a sip of that, it was literally like drinking chocolate. It tasted very strongly of chocolate. Um, I've had another one that was, she's my cherry pie. Again, I like the gimmicky titles because it tells you what to expect and yeah, it kind of makes it more enticing. It already preps my brain for what to expect. So the cherry pie was heavy on the French cuvee and the um, toasted spice. And that made sense too, because it was a very, it was not quite as rich and robust as this one. It was more like a fresh, cherry flavor with a little bit of spice to it. So that one matched the stave profile pretty well. So hopefully this helps guide you a little bit more with Maker's Mark. There are some fantastic picks out there. They're usually around 60, 65 bucks, somewhere in there. And you can find some really awesome, tasty flavors. And if you are aware of your, your flavor preferences, that description can really help narrow things down for you a little bit more. So be on the lookout, check your local liquor store for some of their picks, and until next time, cheers. Mm -hmm.